Okay, we are live, and, and I'll start seeing the numbers popping up as audience members come in. And uh, so it should be pretty interesting. I was just having a chat with someone who moved twice in the past year. And, uh, and they agreed, man, what a pain in the neck, what a high anxiety, what a high stress activity that is. And everybody stresses out when it's time to move. Everybody. They don't even know where to start, especially if you've collected a, a lifetime or a few decades of stuff and material. Or if you're a hoarder, I would imagine it would be a lot harder to move. Uh, so so why, don't, why don't we just start a conversation? We, we got some people on the air, and I just, I'll just i introduce uh, the show. Good evening, uh, my friends. We have tonight a special guest, Sam Field. Sam owns a moving company. Sam is also a client of mine who has become a friend. But everybody hates moving. Everybody. Like, where do you even start if you have to relocate? Where do you start when you have to downsize? Where do you go when you, like, where do you even begin? Do you just go to the liquor store and just start getting boxes? Do you just start asking all your friends, bring home Xerox boxes from, from the office? So we're going to talk about moving. So I would like to introduce to all of you, Mr. Sam Fielding. Hi, Sam. Hey, hello, George. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. <laughs> we got one guy that says, I disagree. I love moving. There must be something wrong with me. <laughs> yes, you definitely are. Drew, you are an outlier on that. So we're going to be talking about all the ins and outs of moving. Uh, Sam, well, first, introduce your company to the audience and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Then we'll just dive into it. Okay. Well, my company is called BR Moving. We're located in the Fishtown section of Philadelphia, and we've been doing this for about 10 years, give or take. And, uh, you know, we're, we're a growing company, so we move all different types of people from small, you know, studio apartments all the way up to big mansions in the suburbs. And we move locally and long distance, and we, we, we can, you know, we do packing, the moving part of it. We'll even send a couple guys out to unload your own truck if you are more of a do it yourself type of person. So we just uh, provide, you know, labor and professional services to this region. That's great. That's great. Now, so you move people. Uh, let's say people have been accumulating stuff. I know whenever I have moved in my lifetime, it was an opportunity for me to downsize a little bit because you think, oh my gosh, I'm, I, I have to move crap from one attic to another, from one basement to another, stuff that I literally haven't touched in 10 years, I'm going to be moving and then it'll sit for another 10 years. So that for me, that's kind of like my, that prompts me to kind of start throwing stuff out. So that's great. People do a lot of downsizing before they move, I would imagine that. But what do you do when someone has a house full of stuff? I mean, you're not just moving furniture. You're moving their stuff. And people's stuff is sacred. Some of the things you might look at or I might look at and say, that's junk. But that's their family heirloom. That's their... Yeah. Uh, how do you even... How do you coordinate... Like when you walk into someone's house and they say, okay, we want to move. This is what we have. How can you help us? Okay. So packing is essential. You want to get all those little odds and ends into a box and you want to tape both sides of the box and make it a square, you know, unit that we can efficiently move because when we're moving random, you know, if you go into with, you go into a house and there's things all over the dresser, there's stuff in the corner, you know, it's going to take a very long time to move that person. But when we go into the house and every, all the boxes are, are 
piled up and it's very evident what's going and what's staying, we can get you out of there very quickly. So there's a lot of communication that goes on between the company and the client before we even come to your door. We try to get a gauge of how much you have to move, what type of you know person you are. You know, do you have kids? Are you a single person? Are you, you know, a business? Like there's a lot of things that we kind of learn over the years of, you know, how much stuff this person has. We also look at your house on Google. Like we'll look and see what, you know, if you tell us an address, we already know a lot about you right then. You know, different neighborhoods have different types of people living in them, different, uh, you know, somebody will say to us, you know, Oh, we have bunk beds. And I automatically know in my head that when someone has a bunk bed in their house, they also means they have tons of like kids toys and, you know, all the other things that go along with children. So we try to, you know, we get pretty good at kind of figuring out what we think we're walking into. Do you uh, disassemble furniture or do you just move the furniture or do you expect the homeowner themselves to disassemble the bunk beds or the, whatever, maybe modular furniture or something like that. What do you, what is your role as a moving company with people who don't have nice clear cut boxes to move? Well, we, we always come with tools because a lot of furniture can't be moved unless it's disassembled. Ah, and so yeah. we, we will come with tools and we will take apart your item. Then we pack it onto the truck. And then in the new place, you let us know where you would like it and we're going to assemble it there for you. So we take care of it from start to finish. That's, wow. a good, that's a question we get a lot. Do you take apart things? Because I believe some movers don't, some movers do, but you know, for us, that's part of it. And every once in a while we do get like, you know, do it yourself people that want to save a few dollars. And we have no problem with that because that person might want to take apart the beds the night before, but we get there. And that's going to save them time on their bill. And, all, you know, and that's fine. That's fine, too. But not a lot of people don't want to do it. Some people do. So it's really up to the customer. But you're right. Communication is key because sometimes they'll say, you know, we're going to take everything apart. It's really not that much. And then we get there and it's different. And, you know, the job takes longer. Yeah. Now, when it comes to moving stuff. You know, you look at a room full of like a, a child's bedroom or mm -hmm. let's say a workshop. Let's say a guy's got a workbench and, you know, all his tools and this kind of stuff. I mean, do you just look at that and say, OK, that'll that's going to cost you a thousand dollars to get packed up. That that kind of thing. Do you do that or do you charge by the hour or by the staff that you provide? How does that work? So. And it depends on the type of move, but for local moves, we charge by the hour. And so when we go and do a estimate, the client will give us a tour of their home and we can look at everything they have in their house. And, you know, typically we'll send a three man crew, but if it's a very large house or a lot of packings include, involved, we're going to need to send a four man crew or a five man crew. And then the hourly rate just gets higher because we're sending more resources. Yeah. So, you know, we'll tell people, for instance, say if I go look at a house and it looks like, you know, it looks like a big house. I'm going to say, you know, it's going to take us all day to pack you. You know, I'm going to send three guys there to pack you on on the first day and we'll get you packed up. And then, you know, we'll leave out your 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 bed and we'll leave your you know, you put your necessities in the, in the corner. You know, we're going to pack everything that you don't need for tonight. And then in the morning we come with the trucks and we load all those things onto the truck and take you to your new place. Wow. What is what is the longest move that you've ever moved someone? There there's we you know, sometimes we go to Florida, so those are long moves because they're like five days. Yeah. But they're planned that way. So I wouldn't okay. consider that the longest move. The longest move, you know, I've been on that when it comes to my mind is back when I used to go on the truck is like, you know, doing a job of a, a big job to New York City and coming back to, at four in the morning. Yeah. You know, so working maybe, I don't know what that is, 20 hours or something, you know, just like long, long days. There's a lot of long days in the moving industry because yeah. 
when we go to a, someone's house, we're in it to the end. And if they're not packed or if they have more stuff than we anticipated, you know, the day's, the day's going to take a long time. But we try to plan better. We try to plan as well as we can so that if we think it's going to be one of those days, we're going to tell the customer, hey, you, this is a big move. Let's load you on Monday and then we're going to deliver on Tuesday. Let's not okay. plan for this type of, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's plan for success. So when you let's say like you move a living room, do you move all of the stuff in the living room to the living room in the new house? Or do you just kind of put everything in the garage or everything in a, in a main room and then they have to kind of put stuff where they want it? Or do you, or is it like bedroom number one? Every, you know, everything that's from bedroom number one is marked bedroom number one. Everything that goes in the living room is marked living room. Like, what do you, how do you do that? The best way to do it is, um, is labeling the boxes and, and to answer your question, yes, we're going to put it where you need it to go. So the only pickup is that when we pack a truck, we can't pack the truck in sections of like, put all the bedroom stuff on first, put all the living room stuff on second, right? When we pack the truck, we put dressers on first, and then we put boxes on top of the dressers, and then we find other square stuff. We want to pack the truck densely, you know, to get as much on there as possible. So we just start with all the square big stuff, and we put boxes on top of that. So then we kind of, you know, taper it off, and at the end, you're talking about, you know, kind of oddly shaped items that you would put on at the end would be like a crib or like, uh, you know, plants, uh, lamps, stuff that doesn't fit into this, like, you know, square, the square stuff. And, uh, and then the best is if the client, when we're unloading, I always tell the client, if you can stay by the front door of your house or stay by the end of the truck, because this is really a team effort in order for us to do our job efficiently. We need you to be letting us know where everything goes. Yeah. You no, know, so we're going to come off the truck with a dresser and we're going to want you to say, OK, that's second floor rear. And then other guys coming with like, you know, boxes and hopefully they're labeled. If they're not labeled, then, you know, maybe you you'll, maybe you could tell us where you want us to put all your boxes. Some stuff's obvious, you know, like usually the couch does go to the living room. The coffee table goes to the living room. But, you know, we've seen it all. So it's really up to you where you want your stuff. Yeah. What about garages? Obviously, you know, a lot of people's garages or basements, they have like a workbench and shelves with tools and coffee cans with nuts and bolts and paint cans. And I, I like, I just think about, you know, like, a, I just think about someone like myself, like my work area looks like a work area and it's got to be, I'm not going to have that stuff moved into the living room. I, I need it moved to the basement or the garage or something yeah. like that. That's some of the hardest stuff, you know, tool chests are heavy, tools are heavy. So we're going to, we're going to have to pack that up and put it on the truck. And at the new place, you're right. You know, a lot of that's going to go to the basement. So we're going to have to walk through your house and down to the basement, or maybe we're going to pull the truck around back. If we get lucky, you know, leave all that stuff on the truck and then pull it around back. And the, the garage is right there. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of different ways that we, you know, we always try to get as close to the, the truck as close as possible to where we're going. And then we have different ways of kind of working it. Like when we're in a small basement, sometimes we do something called a chain, which is one guy takes the stuff from the truck to the top of the steps. And then there's another guy that's taking it from the top of the steps down into the basement. Okay. You know? So we're meeting each other and we don't want to be walking past each other constantly. Right. So, um, but those are hard stuff to move. You know, tool chests are very heavy. And like, you know, I'm, I'm picturing that garage perfectly that you described. It's, there's a lot in there. And yeah. so either you're going to have to be okay putting all your stuff in boxes or, you know, you're going to have to hire someone to put your stuff in boxes. It's not going to be perfectly organized. You know, it's, it's, I think it's hard for me when I move, like I, you know, I'm the type of person that wants to kind of go through everything and have it perfectly organized. But sometimes that's actually slows you down where you can't really get anything done. You know? Yeah. I kind of recommend you just put everything in boxes and then you start, you kind of unorg you, you, you organize when you're unpacking at your new place. Right. What that about, you, 
When I think about like garages, I think about bicycles, lawn mowers, riding mowers, mm-hmm. power tools, leaf blowers, uh, lubricants, cans of stuff. I mean, just like garage yeah. stuff. You, yeah. That's what do you do with that? We can put a lot of that in boxes, but and the bikes we can take, but we don't take. You can't put um like gasoline on a truck, you know. Um, so say you want to put a ride on mower on our moving truck, we would have to just drain the gas somehow, maybe run it out okay. of gas, you know, and then we can put it on, uh, you know, lubricants is fine. You gotta, you gotta maybe wrap it in plastic and put it in a box. So it's upright and put a, put us arrow on the box, you know, keep, keep upright. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll move it all. We'll, we move everything. The things we don't move is like propane containers, paint cans. We don't move. Uh, construction. So, all right. So someone's got a gas grill. You can't mm-hmm. move the the propane tank. No, no, that has to go in your car. We, wow. We'll, we'll take the grill for you. You know, but put the propane in your car. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Th- this I did not know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We can't put like explosives, um, ammunition, and guns. You know, we can't put that. We'll, we'll take your gun safe, but. I think it's better if you take your guns, you know? Yeah. Okay. What about if a person has like a 18th century piano that was once played by Mozart or something like that, you know, and it's, it's fragile and it's historic. Uh, what do you do with something like that? So that I'm going to recommend that they call Duffy Piano Movers which is a specialized company. They only move pianos all day long. They move pianos. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll pick it up that, you know, they'll treat that piece with the care that it needs. I don't know how, the, if they're going to create it or wrap it or what, but you know, they'll treat it with care. And then at the new place, they'll tune it for you. Oh, wow. So um, we do move pianos, but we have kind of a certain specifications that we'll do. We only move upright pianos. And we'll only move them like up or down one or two stairs. We won't go, we won't take them up stairwells. You know, if you have a rancher or something like that and you yeah. just have one step to get inside your front door. Yeah. And you have an upright piano, we'll move it for you. But wow. that's, that's not our specialty, you know. It's kind of just yeah. goes along with like the household move. What about artwork? So artwork, we do move. Um, the best, it depends on, you know, the type of piece it is, but... Crating is what you want to do for artwork. Valuable artwork needs to be crated. And what that is, is it's a box that's built specifically for that piece. Hmm. So if you have a, you know, a valuable piece of artwork, you want to protect it during the move. We, um, we, we know people that do crating so we can help you, you know, get, get a, a lead on a crating service and then we can move it for you. Hmm. But uh, we don't do crating in our, in our business. We, we what about a- blankets, you know, we can wrap stuff in blankets and we can box your paint, your paintings for you. So we, we have painting boxes, picture boxes, and we have bubble wrap. So we can do that. But creating is just the next level because it's a hard piece of plywood. Nothing can go through that. Like nothing can happen to it. What about kitchens? Obviously, kitchens are filled with gadgets and pots and pans and mm-hmm. people are moving their food from one place to another what do you what do you do with a kitchen kitchen takes the longest to pack interesting longest to pack so a lot of people just hire us to pack their kitchen they're they're fine packing their other stuff but they want us to do their kitchen and it's a very it's a very just uh it's not difficult but it's time consuming so basically we come into your house with us we'll come with a a big stack of packing paper which is just kind of like a new paper but it doesn't have any writing on it it's kind of like if you think of a big piece of uh newsprint that's basically what it is yeah we have lots of those and we're gonna have bubble wrap and boxes and so each piece in your kitchen will get placed in paper and then we and we pad the bottom of the box and we put it in the box and we pack it you know densely in a box yeah each piece wrapped in its own piece of paper and we label it fragile you know kitchen kitchen you know stemware or kitchen glasses we're going to label it and then we put it on the truck um 
it goes on the top layer of everything on the truck. You know, you, you don't pack that on the bottom. You pack it on the top. And then in the new place, we're going to bring it back into your new kitchen for you. Wow. And will you unpack it or just put the box there? We, in general, we just put the box where the client wants it. But we do offer unpacking services. And I would say it's a pretty rare occurrence to unpack someone. But there are some people that want unpacking. And we will do it for you. But it's, it's a bit of a difficult service because we could put it, you know, where we think you want it or you could tell us where you want it. But at the end of the day, it doesn't, you know, it's kind of a personal thing to unpack into your new kitchen. It's a little bit, you know, you, you're going to want to make those decisions over time. You know, yeah. having someone unpacks for you, it's kind of like, you know, they might be making that decision and you might not like it. Or you might just be over their shoulder telling them, you know, it's, it's a very like meticulous service. It's a difficult to perform. Do you move? I'm, I'm trying to think of, I was involved in a couple estate sales where someone died and their whole house was filled. And then like an auctioneer comes by and sells everything mm -hmm. uh, to the people. And there's always stuff left over. Do you get hired as a contractor to come and get stuff? Do you, are you a clearing house for stuff for estate sales or you just move from A to B? Our main, our main uh, service is just moving. So say if you go to an estate sale and buy a load of stuff, you know, you can call us and say, Hey, I just, I have a job. I need all of this, these belongings moved from this location to that location and we'll do it no problem. So a lot of our jobs do turn out to be, it's not always moving someone's house. A lot of times we're like combining two houses into one or, or picking up that load of, you know, stuff that you just bought and bring it to your house. And then one thing we did start last year that I'm really proud of is uh, we started a furniture donation service. And that we realized that a lot of people have stuff they want to get rid of. You know, like you said, during the move, it's kind of a purging time. Yeah. So what we did is um, we have uh, we basically offer to all of our customers as a free service is that if you have an item that's within our donatable, you know, parameters, for instance, we don't take beds, but we'll take, you know, tables, chairs, couches in good condition. And we bring it back here and then we have Habitat for Humanity and another company um, come and pick it up from us. And so it goes to people in need. So it's a way of keeping furniture out of the landfill and providing our customers with the service of getting rid of things they no longer need. I see. I see. So a, com a company called the Furniture Bank. This is a company called the Furniture Bank and they come pick stuff up from us every week. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there one kind of customer that's harder to move than others? Yeah, there's all types. There's all types of customers that are harder than others. Um, hmm. You know, I love all of our customers. And I think that the, the one thing that's, that makes you good as a mover is that the ability to figure out what your particular customer needs that day. So, for instance, when we go move some people, they need they're more concerned with the time. They need their things moved quickly and they might not want every single and their, their items might not be pristine and and high value. They might want their things moved in an efficient, quick manner without all the bells and whistles. So giving that customer what they want. Yet there's other customers that don't care at all about the time or the money and they want the full, you know, service. Yeah. So like being able to, to discern what, what we need, what's, what's today, what are we going to do today? You know, what is this customer asking for? And they're not always going to tell us explicitly what they want, but when you do it enough, you kind of figure out um, what they want. And moving is really a service job. You know, it's kind of like a waiter, you know, gets to know their, their client, you know, during the course of a, of an evening out we get to know our client during the course of a move. So, you know, you want to, we, we make, we try to make it, you know, a fun experience for them. 
try to get to know them, figure out what, 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 what makes them tick and how can we kind of make them have a good experience? You know, what's their priorities today? Yeah. What about when it comes to downsizing, let's say a husband dies, it's an older couple, the husband dies and there's no way the wife can, the widow can maintain a huge house with all the stuff and she's moving to an apartment or assisted living or some kind of community of some type. Um, how do you even begin to consult with someone like that? To, how do you, yeah. how do you minimize the trauma and the chaos? Cause most people, most people are not like, Oh goody, I'm moving. They're like, Oh yeah. crap. I got to move. It's hard. Well, we, we actually work with two different um, companies who are really good at that. And so the one is called Moves for Seniors. And Moves for Seniors is a company that uh, moves seniors. And so how they do it is that they, they assign, they book jobs with seniors and then they assign you a move manager. And so that your move manager is someone that's going to help you kind of leading up to the move. They're going to make sure that you get packed up and that you can figure out what's going and what you're getting rid of and then we come in to do the labor part of the move so long story short you kind of need someone that's not just the moving company you might want to get a trusted family member or friends you want to or or you could hire you know a move manager like like moves and then we we work with another company moves made easy and the woman that owns that misha she actually specializes in downsizing so yeah. she helps she helps people with this exact there are specialists out there that help people with this exact problem because there's a lot of people that have lived in their homes for 50 60 years yeah and you accumulate over the years more than you could really even understand is there yeah and then time to downsize that's a big job so a moving company is part of it and we can help you the best we can um but, you know, the way that we operate is like we're kind of just we move a lot of people every day. We're moving people. So we kind of need like the parameters set for us. You know, what are we moving? Yeah. And wow. Yeah. The way we manage it is that we've just, you know, you kind of hear a lot from people. A lot of times people will call and say, oh, I don't it's a small move. I don't have anything. And then they kind of list what they have, you know. And it's like we always take it with a grain of salt because we hear it. every. Yeah. Oh, it's just a small move. It's nothing, you know. People kind of tell themselves what they want to hear sometimes, tell us what, yeah. they, what they believe, and it's not really always the reality. So, Wow. What about uh, storage units? Do you move stuff to storage units or from storage units, uh, from a storage unit to another storage unit? Tell me yeah. about storage units. Yeah, absolutely. That's a huge, a huge part of our business. Um, we do all different types of storage moves. Uh, sometimes we'll move a one bedroom apartment into storage because this, it's a student who's going away for a few months. And when they come out, when they come back to the city, you know, we're going to move them back to an apartment. So sometimes people use storage in between apartments. Some people have storage units because, you know, it was a, a couple got together and they, they, they got an apartment together and they didn't have enough room for both apartments you know they're living together now and so they they rent a storage unit to hold the excess stuff and then eventually that you know they move to the suburbs and then that's a fun move because then we take their apartment stuff and we take their storage stuff and we put it in their house they finally have room for it all hmm. so you know it's a pretty interesting business because we see we see people through all different parts of their lives you know and yeah storage is it's huge. You know, there's storage units all over the place. I think that's a huge business now. You know, it's funny. When I was growing up, there was no, I don't remember any storage places. Now there's Cube Smart and all these different places. And it seems like so many people have storage units. And it just kind of blows my mind. I have a storage unit. Oh, okay. And it blows my mind that I'm paying to store stuff that I'm not using. It's like, yeah. mm. it's hard to get rid of that stuff. But, yeah, the storage people have figured it out. It's a great business, I'm sure. But, uh, 
Yeah. I think, um, some, you know, some apartments come with storage units in the basement. Yeah. There's all different types of storage units. You know, the ones where you drive up to and it's just right there. Have yeah. Something like that. It's like in the suburbs typically. Those yeah. ones are incredibly easy to get in and out of because we can put our truck right there. Down in Center City, you know, they're harder. We, we have to take elevators to get you to your stuff in the storage unit. You know, so that takes a lot more time. That's another question. Let's say somebody's moving from a ground floor apartment or house to a high rise. Mm -hmm. That's got to be a whole different thing because you got to coordinate with the building supervisors. And I would imagine you're not you're not dragging stuff through a nice lobby of an apartment building. Are you are you going in through a back door or something or? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yes. They don't like that. If you if you try to <laughs> go in the front, we uh, we use the loading dock. So there's we, we there's hundreds of buildings in Philadelphia and um, some of them have loading docks, which is really nice because you back the truck up and it's a level floor with the back of the truck. So we can just take this, your stuff off the truck and put it on dollies, roll it to the elevator, take the elevator up and roll it to your apartment. Others, we have to put the truck on the street and go through all different types of underground passageways. There's a lot of different, every building is different. So when people call us, you know, we know the different buildings and we know how long certain buildings take. Some buildings are better than others. There's, yeah. not there's notorious buildings that are horrible to move into. And there's other buildings that are pretty easy to move into. So uh, what happens in apartment moving is that we reserve the elevator. They have a freight elevator, hopefully, and we'll reserve it from, for instance, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. So that means wow. we're going to arrive at 9 a.m. and we're going to have exclusive use of that elevator for the those hours. And so we'll get you loaded onto our truck and then, you know, go to the next place. And if there's an elevator there, hopefully we can get that reserved from, you know, 11 to 1. So there's a lot of a lot of different like organizational um considerations when we're moving in center city and apartment buildings yeah now obviously beds most beds have to be taken apart and there's a, some pretty elaborate beds out there from the type of beds that are uh that kind of like are like hospital beds where they you know like they rise they're they got like a remote and they're just very exquisite and they're huge and they're heavy and they got to be assembled and disassembled. Do you assemble a bed at the new location? Like you, you disassemble it at the old location and then assemble it at the new location? Yes. That's the number one. I would say that's the number one assembly job because, you know, after a long day of moving, you, you your client needs to go to bed. So we will... Uh, you know, we have no problem if you leave your bed assembled and when we come to your house, we're going to move all your belongings and we're going to take your bed apart, take the mattress, take the box spring, wrap it so it doesn't get dirty or ripped, put it on our truck and then assemble it in your new bedroom. Uh, you know, you always want to kind of make sure, do a little measuring beforehand, make sure everything's going to fit because... A lot of times we can't, you know, in Philadelphia, some of these homes are from the 1800s and they were designed before there was such a thing as a box spring. So, you know, it's not that uncommon for the box spring not to fit up the stairs. In right. Case, we have some, you know, a few things we can do. But wow. it's uh, definitely something to think about. Hmm. We have one... Uh listener she says can i ask the moving company for boxes and packing material and i do the packing and labeling myself for everything except all the heavy furniture do you do that you can do that we can do that for you um it's you know it's not really our principal business to to, to sell boxes so it would depend where you were but uh if you were in if you were close to us you know and you were going to use us for your services then we would have no problem selling you some boxes we could drop them off one day uh -huh. um a great place if you're a do it yourself packer what i recommend is is u-haul they sell boxes at a really reasonable price and 
what I like about them for the clients is that if you have leftover boxes, they will take them back. You know, anything that you don't use, they'll take it back and give you money for it. Oh, wow. But I do understand for some people, it's hard to, you know, transport all those boxes. So, you know, it, it, on occasion, we can deliver them to you before the move. Interesting. What's the hardest thing you've ever moved? Hmm. The hardest thing is is when you go to an apartment and there's a couch inside the apartment already. And so, you know, it got in there and you can't figure out how to get it out. And, you, you know, you're trying to get this huge couch out of a doorway that it doesn't seem to want to fit. So you have to try it this way and that way. That's the mentally most challenging thing is, is getting stuff where it needs like thinking about thinking about spatially. OK, that's that's mentally hard trying to figure it out, not get the furniture stuck, not damage the walls. Physically yeah. hard is moving a sleeper sofa to a, a fourth floor walk up in New York City. Oh, wow. That's that's like the physical hard end of the job is, is walk ups and just heavy boxes, book boxes and sofas over and over again, up and down the stairs. Oh, wow. Yeah. How about motorcycles? We've moved motorcycles. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of tricky to pack on a truck, but we've done it. We'll move it for you. And do they have to be drained of, of fuel? Yeah, that would be best. We don't want to put any gasoline or flammable substances on our truck. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What about a library, a person's office, and they got just a great library? Mm -hmm. How do you even begin to deal with that? Well, books are, sorry about that. Books are, uh, you know, for me, they're easy enough because they're square. They fit into a box nicely. OK, so you just put them in a box densely and you want to use small boxes. Books can only go in small boxes. That's that's what I was going to ask you. What is the perfect size box for moving? Because it's yeah. not just a matter of going to the supermarket and asking the manager, I need some boxes for moving because they will give you egg boxes and big, you know. Yeah. Well, like a lot of people love the liquor store, like you said, and it's really not that helpful when we're trying to pack the truck and we have boxes that are all different sizes, you know, we're playing Tetris in there. Like this box is this big, this box is this big. And we're trying to put yeah. it all together like a Tetris puzzle. Like it kind of, it kind of is nice. And I think it actually saves people money in the end on their moving costs when all the boxes are uniform, but that's not to say they're all the same size. You want right. to buy an assortment of boxes because for your pillows, and comforters, you can put those in extra large boxes. We have no problem with that. Yeah. But for books, you want to use the small box. And then maybe grab some medium boxes, you know, for your kitchen, uh, you know, mixing bowls, stuff like that. So it's yeah. like there's a perfect box for every item. And so I remember when you asked me about the difficult uh, client? Yeah. I just realized who, who it is. So the difficult client is the one that said that doesn't want to buy an assortment of boxes. They just want to buy all the big boxes because that makes it easier for them. So they just pack everything into extra large boxes. They don't understand the purpose of buying small boxes. And so then we're trying to move extra large boxes that weigh 100 pounds each. And we have to use two men to move it. And they're breaking out the bottom and stuff's getting broken oh. inside your boxes. You know, oh, wow. people, people do that. You'd be surprised how often people just want to get only one extra large box because it seemed easier or something. That makes sense. And you know what? That's not something a lot of people think about because a box, uh, a large box, let's say like a box that, uh, you know, like toilet paper or paper towels come in, you know, like that, like them big box, something like that filled with books. I mean, yeah, it's a nightmare. Wow. You know those big, you know those big um, Tupperware bins, like the huge, heavy-duty ones that are designed. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. I've, seen, I've moved those full of books before. Oh my gosh! It's not, it's not really that great. 
That's like, I mean, that's just like moving a box of rocks. Yeah. Now, what about buildings? Do most buildings that you move to have elevators, or are you finding some of the older buildings, you're just going upstairs? So there's in Philadelphia, there's, there's two types. It's either a walk-up or an elevator building. And luckily in Philadelphia, the most walk up, the most floor walk up we have is usually fourth. Every once in a while, we'll be on a fifth floor roof deck or something. But for the most part, the most walking up in Philadelphia you're going to do is five floors. I'm sorry, four okay. floors. And then all the rest are elevator buildings. In New York, it's totally different. In New York, they have walk ups that go up to five, six, seven floor walk ups. Oh, know. wow. In New York, they have wow. more, much more walk-ups than we have here. That is no joke. That is absolutely no joke. Now, what yeah. about uh, kids' rooms, children's rooms? I so, mean, they got toy they got toy boxes and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, they they're pretty easy to move. You know, the kids' room. I've seen some messy ones, but if you're prepared, we'll move a kids' room no problem. Yeah. Um, the, you know, it, a move can really be made or break, you know, based on the client. You know, if you're pleasant and, and somewhat prepared and, you know, we're going to have a great day. Yeah. But if, like, you know, we walked into some real, you know, real messes over the years and, and that can, that's where it kind of gets interesting. But yeah, kids' rooms, no problem. Other than maybe the bunk beds are hard to take apart. You know, there's some hard furniture that goes along with it. But other than that, it's easy. I mean, stuffed animals. I've, you know, we moved huge stuffed animals, uh, tricycles. You know, yeah, they, kids come along with a lot. You know, it's just more things to move. But none of it's particularly hard to move. It's just yeah, toys and you know, I'm trying to. What think about stuff. what yeah. about safe? like a safe or a gun safe. I mean, those things are like an anchor. How do you even begin yeah. to? They, they are hard. We have a special hand truck that we use to move refrigerators and freezers, and, and that'll work pretty good on a on a gun safe. It's a, called an appliance dolly, appliance hand truck. We can use that. But, yeah, they're heavy. You know, we'll, we'll, if, if you have an item like that, we charge what's called like a special item fee, and it's just an extra fee that goes to the crew get split up three ways it kind of compensates the the men for mm -hmm. you know for lifting this extremely heavy item yeah i'm trying to think of you to, of some things to tell you but i honestly think i blocked it all out you know because it's uh from back in the day just some horrible things that we've moved i just can't even think of anything right now you kind of you kind of block out a lot of stuff because you know I've been in so many situations <laughs> yeah Here's one. Uh, one guy says, what about a sex dungeon? Have you ever packed yes. up a sex dungeon? Yes. yes. Thank you. For yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Without like, you know, I don't want to. Yeah. We've seen it all. So to answer that question, you know, yeah, we've seen it. It's, it's kind of weird, you know, it, uh, I've seen it all, you know, I've seen, you know, sex toys fall out of, uh, you know, side tables and haven't been packed up properly and yeah it's, it's unbelievable you would think that like you know some people don't really care some people keep stuff private and others just could not care less so yeah we've seen it all like it's a very personal job uh and i guess that's yeah that's all i'll say i don't know what else to say about that right right what about hobbyists now let's say a person has a craft room or they're an artist and most hobbyists, I mean, they got, you might, might have a, a, a kiln, you might have a lathe, uh, woodworking equipment, you know, you know, stationary floor mount power tools, uh, yeah. table saws, ladders, you know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff. That's hard. Yeah. That's like almost like moving a workshop or an artist studio that those can be some hard moves You're, we've done it. Um, and uh, we really need to plan, you know, to do that type of move because it's going to be, you know, a very hard laborious day. Everything basically that you're describing there is heavy. So yeah. every single item is heavy. So hopefully, 
we have a good freight elevator to work with or we're not taking it into any ridiculous places. Yeah. I remember one job from my very early days of moving uh, and the, the, it was a, a kind of a comic book collector guy. And so he had tons of comic books and then he had full size arcade machines. Like, you know, in the old days that you would stand up at it and have a joystick. Yeah. With a whole, it was yeah. a pretty much as tall as a person. And we had to move those to his apartment, which was like a third or fourth floor apartment. And it was just like, didn't really make sense, you know? Like, it's like, really, you want to put this up there? Mm-hmm. And I, I believe we did it. But some people have unreasonable expectations, you know? Like, over the years, I've I begin to think that, you know, there's certain homes don't need to contain certain things. You know, just because you own it doesn't mean your new home, it can stay there. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> right, right. You, know, you got to kind of like... Like you're moving into an old house, you can't have all huge furniture. Like what? It's not going to work. Yeah. But yeah. Have you ever? Yeah. Have you ever dealt with any scammers? Probably. Um, had people cancel checks on us. Uh, try not to pay. Uh, you know, yeah. Like if if the move's gone poorly, sometimes you know people will try not to pay. Yeah. What what kind of scammers do you are you thinking of? Like, do people, like, do you charge, like, 50% up front and then the other 50% upon completion of the job? Or what do you, how do you, how do you charge? Well, what we do is, um, you know, we do want to make sure you're a serious client. So we take a deposit and we don't take a huge deposit. We take a deposit for one hours of work. So if you want to book a move with us, we're right now, our hourly rate's $165. So you know, you call us or you email us and we, we arrange the move and we're going to say, OK, we're going to put you in our schedule for the 10th um, and we're going to send you an invoice. You know, that's going to reserve your spot. Mm-hmm. So so we get them on the books. We take some money and that reserves their spot. Uh, it doesn't really keep people from canceling all the time. You know, so it keeps some people legit, but other people, you know, you do it enough that you'll have everything happen. You know, people cancel the day before people people will like cancel people have called other will call other movers to move them and then you're and then not tell you that they cancel with you so you go there and then you know it's like we deal with hundreds of people each year so it really is we've seen everything it's uh you know we, we try to minimize that stuff but there are some people who are uh you know not pleasant to deal with out there are there scamming moving companies? Like, I'm looking at one uh, listener. He says, like, how the customer could determine if they're dealing with a malicious or scamming moving company. That's a great question. So I would recommend, first of all, call the people that your family has recommended, your friends have recommended, or look at their reviews on Google or Yelp. You know, look at their and and when, and once you do look at those reviews, like for instance. A great way to find movers is the internet. You know, you type in whatever city you're in, you know, moving company, Philadelphia, and check out the, what comes up. And you're going to see some websites, you know, if it's a legitimate website, and then you can read that company's reviews. And if you, if you like what you see so far, maybe give them a call. You're going to tell a lot about the company from those three things because you see that they have a legitimate website you read other people's reviews and then you talk to the representative on the phone. When you call that company, you might not like the representative or they might rub you the wrong way. You know, maybe that's when you want to move on to the next company or, you know, they might, they might have all the right answers and you want to move forward with them. Mm -hmm. The questions you want to ask are, are you insured? Um, You know, are you licensed? Because every mover has to be licensed. You have to be licensed by the state that you're moving in. Or if it's an interstate move, you need to be licensed by the federal government. So, oh, so okay. that's a great research tool right there. Um, the federal government, the, 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 uh, it's a FMCSA, Federal Motor Carrier Association, something like that. You can go online and see if the company is listed with the government. And uh, that'll give you a, a tip. But yeah, I would say just use your, you know, your social skills and your instincts and you'll, you'll find the right mover. Do you, 
you do one move at a time. I know some large moving companies will pack two or three people's homes in one large trailer mm -hmm. and make the appropriate stop and unloading geographically. You know, they order it, you know, they create the, the order of unpacking. Do you do that or do you do one family, one move? We're starting to get into that. Um, what you described, we're starting to get into that because as we've been going longer and longer distances, we realize that we could offer people slightly lower rates if we can combine another job on that truck. So we're starting to learn that, you know, you never, as from a business perspective, you don't want to have an empty truck and going anywhere. You always want to have that truck filled. Yeah. You know what I mean? To be as efficient as possible. Mm -hmm. So we're getting into that a little bit, but that being said, we do have a lot of clients who want uh, what we call like full use of our truck or uh, direct service. So if you are, say, a, like a business executive and, you, you know, your company is moving you from New York City to uh, Atlanta, you know, maybe you don't want to have to wait around and, and have your stuff delivered at the whim of, you know, a kind of a more complicated schedule. You might want your stuff picked up on Tuesday and you might want it in Atlanta on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So we call that a direct move. And it's like, we can do that for you as well, where we're, you're going to be our sole client. Okay. Those type of details are, you know, worked out prior to the move. So, yep. How, how about uh, clothing? I'm, when I think about like the closet that my clothes are in right now, versus when I was married and we had a walk-in closet, which was like another room. It was pretty much a room. Yeah. Do you, do you pack clothes or do you want the customer to pack their own clothing? And how do you pack clothes? We, we pack clothes and we, and also, you know, we don't pack every client. A lot of people do want to pack themselves. So for those clients, they're going to be packing themselves. But uh, we, we pack clothes for our packing clients. And we bring wardrobe boxes, which is a tall box with a bar across the top. Yeah. So you can actually hang your hanging clothes in the box. Okay. And you know, we have a little room at the bottom. You could throw in a few things at the bottom if you want. So we have wardrobe boxes. And then for folded clothes, you could put it in suitcases. If the client has their own suitcases, that's a good place to put it. Um, usually they're going to overflow a little bit. And so at that point, you want to want to put it into boxes, you know, and you, you could use a little bit of a larger box if you want, because clothing's relatively light. So it goes into boxes. Um, I always say use what you have. Like there's no point in us moving an empty suitcase onto our truck. Like why don't you pack your stuff in the suitcase and we'll move a, a packed suitcase on our truck, you know? You want Brilliant. to kind of use like efficiently. So, yeah, we pack clothing, shoes. Um, you know, I, I think the best, my best advice I could give to someone is to pack your own, like, you know, um, jewelry, your, your underwear drawer, maybe like your personal, your most personal stuff. Right. I always tell people you should pack that yourself and maybe put that in your car. Even, you know, I don't think there's any, you know, you don't want to take any chances of like losing something. It's like, and this is like when you have your most precious items, I mean, it's good for you to pack those things yourself, I think. Yeah. You know, here's a great, here's a great question from Valerie. She says, what would the process be of moving from the United States to Canada? Does the mover have to have special documents and paperwork? Yes, they do. I, that's a great question. I'll have to get back to you on that because I actually don't know. Going across the border is a whole nother thing. So I guess um, you would have to find a cross-country shipper. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I don't know the answer to that. We have never moved anyone to Canada, believe it or not. We only do the United States. Although that, there is a company, is there's a company not far from us that specializes in Puerto Rico, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Rosa Del Monte. Yeah. Hmm which is really interesting, but they, yeah, they do like shit. I think they, yeah, I don't know how they do it. So I'm sorry. I don't know the answer to that. 
what about these pod companies? Mm-hmm. You know, where you, what do they do? What, what, what's the whole, and I've seen several versions of pod moving companies. Tell me about what the pod type companies do. So what they'll do is they will um, bring a container and actually put it in your driveway or on the street in front of your house. And so then you have use of the container. You can start bringing your stuff out to the container and pack it full of your belongings. And then a truck will come and pick it up and put it, I guess the truck, yeah, the truck will pick it up and it'll go to their depot and then you can have it shipped anywhere you want. So that um, from time to time, people do that and we'll load it for them. And I think it's, it's kind of a do it yourself way of moving. You know, pods will basically bring a container anywhere you want. You can put whatever you want in it and then you tell them where you want them to take it, where you want them to take it to. And then you just do the reverse of that. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So if, like I knew a guy that moved from Arizona to Hawaii. Mm-hmm. I would imagine he had to use some type of pod service. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder if it went on a plane or a boat. Yeah. That's a good question. Well, I've, yeah, he might've used the pod service. There's uh, so yeah, there's pods does it. That's like the name brand. Then there, then ABF does it. ABFs is called u and I believe U-Haul even has a version of it. Okay. Now U-Haul is not a competitor, right? They're no. Are U-Haul, they or no? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, not at all. They're, they're they're they sell storage, so they're in the storage business, and they had great stores where they sell everything related to moving. They sell boxes, TV boxes. You can rent blankets from them. You can rent dollies from them. And then they also rent trucks. So U-Haul is a great resource for do-it-yourselfers. I would totally go there if, if I was going to move myself if, and I didn't have a moving company. That's where I would go because okay. you can you could just go there and get everything you need to, to kind of take care of it yourself. So if somebody uses BR Moving, your company, it's pretty much full service they don't have to manage everything you almost work as a moving manager is that correct yourself or one of your guys um yeah basically what we what we need from the client is um you know we're going to ask you for your information your addresses and what you're moving and then if uh you know we'll we'll get an idea of your move and and talk scheduling with you and so then we're going to ask uh, you know, are you packing yourself or are we packing you? Mm. If you're packing yourself, which a lot of our clients do, really, that's you know, that's all you have to do is all you have to worry about is packing yourself. And then um, on the morning of your move, we're, we're going to send out a, a crew and a truck. You know, the, the crew lead calls you that morning and says, hey, we're on the way over to your house. We're about 20 minutes away. We pull up to your house, park the truck. And we're going to ask you to give us a walkthrough of your house. So at that point, you know, you need to show us. We've never been there, you know, and you need to show us what's moving today, what's going. Right. And so that's when we can really get to work and do what we do, which is going to be loading all of your stuff onto our truck and taking it to your new place. But if we're packing you, then, yeah, you don't really have to do much other than let us in the day, you know, let us in the day before to, to let us pack you. Because we bring yeah. all the boxes, we bring tape, we bring paper. You can sit back and and relax while we uh, pack up all of your belongings. When I think about the anxiety, I mean, after everything is moved, I want to go back to my house or apartment and clean. I got a vacuum. I got to. I want to clean the kitchen, clean the bathroom. You know, for the next tenant. Yeah. De- de- depending on where I'm at, I may not be available to go to the destination. I might wait until everything is empty. You guys are en route and I start cleaning the old house or the old yeah. apartment, that kind of thing. Do you prefer 
your customer to be at the destination when the truck arrives? We, we, we can deal with either way. I think the best is if the customer is there or if there's a, if there's two cut, you know, sometimes if it's a, a group of people we're moving or a family, or, you know, if, if you guys can, one person can like clean up the old place while one person can meet us at the new place, things always seem to go better when the client is there, but we understand, you know, we understand the, the pressures of moving. So, and we build a good relationship with the client during the loading process. So there's, it happens all the time where the client will say, here's the keys. You guys go get started. I'll be over there as soon as I can. That's no problem at all because we're going to start unloading. We're going to get right to work and just start unloading. We know where 75% of your stuff goes anyway. And after moving people for years and years, we become really good at placing furniture. Like we know, you know, spatially, we know a lot of times better than the client where something needs to go. Yeah. Like I can look at a a stuff and say, okay, the bed needs to go here. The dresser is here. Like I know the best setup for the room. Yeah. Instinctually. So yeah. I'll tell you another difficult client to move is when you have a long day with a client and they want you to move the, the dresser. They tell you where to put the dresser. And then they say, Oh no, actually I like it over here on this sub wall. Okay. No, actually we're going to move it to this room now. They want to see visually with their eyes uh, maybe different locations of this like piece of furniture, you know, that can get, that can get hard. That can get tiresome. Yeah. You know, but, uh, but at yeah, the end of the day, yeah. At the end of the day, yeah, that's kind of, you know, that can be hard, but uh, yeah, we, we can, we're pretty self-sufficient, you know, we're, we're pretty self-sufficient. So we, you don't need to be there watching over us. It does help though. I think the most successful moves are a team effort mm-hmm. between the client and the company. Okay. Okay. Here's a couple questions from the audience. What size trucks do you have and how many employees do you use for a move? Okay. So we have uh, all of our trucks are under CDL. So that no, we don't have any trucks that require a commercial driver's license. So our largest trucks are 26 foot long um we have a 20 foot truck 24 foot truck we have a couple 16 foot trucks and then we have a van so we basically have a variety of sizes to do different jobs um what was the rest of the question how many employees do you have for a move okay that that depends um We actually did, I would say from one to like anywhere from one to like six employees. And it depends on the move. Like a move we did the other day, we only, the person needed a few boxes and a bike moved from Philadelphia to the Eastern shore of Maryland. So all we had to do was send one employee in our van to do it. And we were able to give her a reasonable price because it didn't take much resources. Right. And then the other job we did last last weekend was six movers and two trucks. We were clearing out an office, an office that was no longer in use. We were taking all of their their office furniture and getting rid of it for them. So that was that was six guys, and it took two and a half days. So that wow, was, that was a big job. Cubicles and desks and chairs yeah. and yeah, it was all desks and shelves, office chairs. And like, yeah, partitions, cubicle partitions. So what we did was on Friday, we took everything apart. We just went in there and just took stuff apart for one whole day and got it all ready. And then on Saturday, we went there with the trucks and loaded them and brought them back here and then loaded them and just did over and over again. So we got everything out of there for them. Hmm. Wow. Here's another question. Can someone save money by helping you move things into and out of the truck? Definitely. Definitely. Um, that'll save you a little bit of money, but what saves you the most money is just packing everything in your house, making sure everything is packed. That will save you the most money. But yeah, you could be, say you say you're the, um, you know, we'll send out a three man crew to move your house, but you're the fourth man. Then we're going to get that done that much faster. So you're going to save a, lo- a, a little bit of money. The only thing is, we don't, you know, 
don't be offended, but we don't always want to carry furniture with our customers because we don't know you and say we wouldn't want, you know, to drop an item or something, an accident to happen. You know, it's uh, we have to kind of feel it out before, you know, for insurance purposes, we can't really have you on our truck. So you can certainly help, but try to like figure out where your help is most needed. You know, right. we're probably not going to have you lifting the heaviest item with us. Have you ever had to take doors off of hinges to get furniture out? That's pretty common. That's a good way to gain a couple inches on your door. So, yeah, we pop the little pins out, take the door off and, and make it fit. Absolutely. That's that's pretty that's pretty standard. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you some other ways we have to take things in. Sometimes you have to take things in through the window. So sometimes it won't oh. fit through the door, but there has a large window in front that they could take out. We yeah. Through windows. And sometimes you even hoist things through second floor windows. So, <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. And in like small trinities down in like in like society hill and stuff, you know, there's yeah. no way that you're getting a box spring up a spiral staircase that was built a very long time ago. Right. So we could actually <clears throat> take out a window, you know, throw a strap around the box spring and just pull it up the side of the house and pull it right in. Wow. Wow. That's one way Boy, to that, do it. That's creative. Yeah. Have you ever had to move a Ever had to move a restaurant? Uh, we've done like kitchen equipment. Kitchen equipment is horrible to move. It's greasy and dirty and heavy. We've done it, but uh, it's not fun. Yeah. Um, as far as a restaurant, I don't know. I don't think we've ever done a rest. We've done one time someone hired us. He a, a craftsman in Philadelphia built these custom benches for a restaurant in Washington, DC. So yeah. like he built them in his workshop in Philadelphia and we had to put them on our truck and take them to the restaurant. So we'll, we'll do jobs like part of a, you know, most time restaurants shut down. They don't really move to a new location. I think they like get rid of their furniture or something. I don't know. Hmm. Now what got you into the moving business? It just, it sounds so hard. I look at it, and of course, I'm kind of, I think I'm just basically telegraphing my anxiety about moving in general, because I just freak out when I think about moving, and it would never be a career choice for me, <laughs> so you are definitely made of something different. What, what were some other things that you might have done in your career, and what made you land on the moving industry? Well... I've been moving people since, you know, I was 16 or 17 years old. So it was always my job, you know, during high school and college. And uh, it's a great way to make, you know, quick cash. Like the moving companies I worked for, you know, back back then would just pay out cash at the end of the day. You know, it's very attractive. And, you, and also moving, you know, I, I'll tell your audience, don't forget to tip your movers. Moving is a tipping business, too. So you always get, you know, it's a service business. So if you do a good job, people will tip you. So it's a great way to make some, some, some good money, you know, rather than working at like, I don't know, a, a minimum wage job somewhere. So, so I've been doing it for, for a long time. And um, I, what I like about it is that you go somewhere new every day. I don't do it anymore because I don't go in the truck anymore, but when you're on the truck, every day is a new adventure. You know, you come to work in the morning and you see your addresses and you see where you're going and, you're, and you start to think in your head like, OK, I don't know what this is going to be like. And, you know, sometimes it's what you think it's going to be like, but sometimes it's a surprise. So you're driving around all day. You're moving people's stuff here and there. You know, you get to stop different places for lunch every day. There's always people give you all types of stuff. There's always stories that happen. It's just a big adventure every day. Yeah. And it's physical. I like physical work. You know, when you're when you're out there moving and you can't you you don't have time for your mind to think about, you know, your problems. You're kind of like in a physical, you know, you're just you're just you have to get this job done. So I really like that aspect. And I like being done at the end of the day. You've actually finished a move. It's not like you're going back to the same site day after day working right. on an endless project. 
you know, we complete jobs every day. So it's, there's a lot of stuff to be attracted to it that attracts me to it. And I think, um, you know, landing on my own company was just, I've always, I'm, my, my passion is business. I love business. I love making money and trying to provide services and selling things. That's just like something that I like my whole life. I've been like that. And moving is the one thing that I know how to do, you know, forward and backwards. So when it came time that my other career avenues didn't work out or I didn't have anything in front of me, I just, it happened to be that I put my business phone number on Yelp and I started a, a profile on Yelp. And so they started sending people to call my phone and I just started getting calls slowly. And I just, and it was a time in my life when I could say yes to every single job. So I did. And I slowly built it up from there. Did you own a truck at that time or did you rent trucks at the time? At that time I rented the trucks. Mm -hmm. And so my first investment to moving was I bought a stack of blankets. I bought a stack of uh, moving blankets and I bought a couple of dollies. And so that's all I had. And what I would do is I would arrange the job with the client that would call me. And at that point I had no reputation to people calling me offline. So I had to purvey a sense of, uh, you know, I, on that phone call was, that was my one chance to, you know, when I answered the phone, I had to answer it the right way. And I had to have, be confident and I couldn't say, I couldn't tell them, you know, really anything other than what they needed to hear, what they wanted to hear so that I could get the job. And then when I went to the job, I had to wow them. Yeah. So, you know I mean? I really want, it was like, it was, it was, it was cool because, uh, it was, um, it was just really fun to be able to build it up that way. And when I saw that I could start stringing jobs together so that in order for me to make money, if I rent a truck, it costs $150. That means I have to be, I have to have enough work that day to support that. So I would have to get either one eight hour job or two, four hour jobs, you know, try to do that. And, you know, you put enough of those days together making money and eventually you can kind of upgrade and buy your own truck. Hmm. What about the increase in gas? Now that, yeah, obviously you, you have to pass that on. You can't eat that cost. How do you, what do you do? That's yeah. We, we, we do have to charge the client for a fuel charge. Now we didn't have to do that before. I, um, it's tough. You know, that's, that's definitely not a, not a good thing, but uh, it's part of it. You know, it goes up and down. Our trucks run on diesel fuel and it's about, it could be like six or $7 a gallon now. So we charge people now. We didn't used to charge it. We used to keep it included in the hourly rate. And now we just added a fuels charge on. Yeah. So try to like minimize the that but it's been a very expensive year really expensive we spent a ton of money on fuel you know 100 bucks doesn't go far anymore in, in a moving no. truck no all right so you're moving somebody out of state you move them do you look all right you move them you unload them you now have an empty truck do you look for a job to fill that truck up or do you drive an empty truck back up to philly we, we've done both, you know, we usually on those direct moves, we, we try to, we just drive the empty truck back unless we're planning to do it. But yeah, it, it would be great to find a load for that truck. And it's, we're trying to build that up. You know, there's, we have a few different places where we could find jobs for it, but it's not that easy. So we call like our partners. We have a few companies that we work with that we're like the contractor for that company. And we'll call them, say, hey, we're passing through, like, we're coming up from Florida on the 29th. Do you guys have anything that needs to come up north? And if they do, you know, we can do it because it's honestly, at that point, we're already down there. What's the, you know, even if it's not a lot of money, every little bit helps. You know, it might not be a high paying load, but it's better than nothing. Yeah. And yeah. we, we, we try to make our, if we're going to go down there and we, we, if we're doing like one of those direct moves I told you about, you know, we're going to build a customer, you know, we kind of take into account our round trip uh, costs, you know? Mm -hmm. So we try not, you know, we don't want to be losing money on any jobs. 
One guy is asking, how much do you charge per hour versus what you pay an employee? Hmm. That, that's an interesting question. That is an interesting question. Um, is, it, is it according to how hard the job is, the number of stairs, if they're gone for more than a day, if you got to put them up in a hotel, if, I mean, yeah, there's, there's a lot so of much things like, you know, a lot of factors. We have, yeah, we have all of our employees have like different hourly rates based on their experience and their skills, you know, just like in any other workplace. If you're brand new, you're not going to be paid as much as the most senior people. So so everybody's got a rate. And uh, and then, yeah, we, we tack on stuff like, say, if we're doing an office move, generally offices are harder to move. And we don't always get like the guys don't always get tips, you know, so we wanted to keep our off our we want to keep our employees motivated on office moves. So what we did was we created an office rate where whatever your normal rate is, you're going to get an extra five dollars an hour because you're at an office job. And and so that's, you know, we have an office rate. Um, you know, if there's a if there's a fifth floor walk up, you're going to your rate's going to be higher. Uh, I don't want to get too much into like employee, you know compensation yeah. and everything, but yeah. uh but yeah we we try to i gotta keep the guys happy you know i, I really got we yeah. gotta pay because we can because yeah. um, it's a hard job it's a really hard job sometimes it's a thankless it job yeah and, uh, yeah it's, what uh, what is what is a, a job from hell is there a job from hell is there a job where you just go oh god there's a there's probably fifty different jobs from hell. <laughs> you know, it, it, every every type of client, you know, I don't know. There's there's let's see. The best thing to do try not to get involved in a job from hell in the first place. You know, <laughs> and you can start to read see those signs sometimes. Yeah. So this time of year, we we need every job we can get. You know, moving is seasonal. So right now we'll, we're, we're accepting all, you know, jobs from hell, you know, every day, if we can get them, you know, hopefully we get some jobs from hell. I don't, right. and I, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, yeah. What is a job from hell? I think it's really just about people, you know, just like anything in life. It's uh, you know, if we can get along and find a way forward, we're going to have a good day together. But okay. some people don't, um, if you don't respect other people, you know, that's going to be a job from hell. If you, if you don't respect people that are doing work for you. Yeah. If you don't, you know, I would say that's, the, that's what makes a job from hell is, is the client. You know, if the client is disrespectful to the to people that are trying to provide you a service that could make it go poorly. Yeah. Who's harder to deal with employees or customers? What would you say? Hmm. Or is it equal or is it just, Apples and oranges. That's two different things. That's a hard one. I think it, it's, it's, it depends who you ask, you know, but because uh, I try to get my crews to be self-sufficient in dealing with the customer. Like once the office books the job, we want the crew to then take it from there and like wow them, you know? Yeah. So you're, not, they, you're, not, you're not micromanaging people. You're not yeah, looking yeah. over their shoulder. No. So that's up to the crew to, to manage the customers. And yeah, they can be difficult for sure. But from a management point of view, yes, yeah, it's, it's employee, you know, from a management point of view, you get it from, from all angles. It is not easy because you got employees, you know, that's HR, human resources. Like that's a hard job trying to, to keep fit. You know, we have about 20 people. And trying to keep them all going in the same direction or just helping everybody out. Everybody has their own little issues that they might need help with. It's a never ending thing. It's it's not bad, but it's just a lot of work, you know, managing a team. Mm -hmm. And then on the customer side, uh, you know, if if something goes wrong, we have to we have to deal with the customers. We gotta make it right for them. So that can that can be time consuming, that can be hard. And then there's this the general public, you know, move it. It's like, you know, the truck could drive down the street and somebody drives a car into them. You know, just random stuff happens. You know, you got to deal with all that. And yeah. people on the street don't really like it if we're blocking the road and stuff, you know. 
So moving in a big city is uh, it's quite an experience. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Is there an ideal job for you? Mm. Really? Like, what do you mean? Like, like for like, like, like the perfect job? Is it residential? Is it commercial? Is it uh, older people? Younger people? Is it college students? For for, I want to say all of the above. Because we really try to cater to all aspects of the market. Like, you know, we, we, we typically run four or five crews a day. And so I would love for one of those crews to be moving an office and other ones moving a house around the suburbs. You know, the, the small trucks are doing like four or five apartment moves. And then, and then we're out, you know, helping moves for seniors. <coughs> Excuse me. So we really don't have like a ideal job. Obviously some yeah. jobs pay better than others and some jobs are easier than others. So like that, the easy answer is like, yeah, like a long distance job that has like hardly anything in it, you know, let the guys drive down the beach, you know, yeah. down the beach with like the van. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a hard job. When do you start in the morning and when do you end at the end of the day? We start, Everything starts getting humming around 7 a.m. The guys come in and the crews will leave between like 7 and 8. And then people start rolling in. Sometimes you have a short day. This time of year we have short days, you know, where the guys might be done by 10 or 11 or, or 1 or 2. And then, you know, you have crews out till like 7 or 8 or 9 o'clock at night if, you know, they had to drive up to Connecticut that day and back or something like that. So, wow. Uh, if anybody, you know, wants to be in the transportation business, like this is a very, it's very, very long hours because we run seven days a week, almost 365 days a year. And the hours are long. You know, you start at 7 a.m. every day. And until that last truck is back, you know, you're still, something could happen. So sure. it's not for people, it's for people that like to work and, and you know, it's it can be fun, but it's, the, this industry is very, very long hours. Wow. What would you say, and this is my final question, what right. would you say to, to calm the hearts of people who are going to be moving in the next year or two? They know they're going to move. They're anxious about it. You've dealt with hundreds and hundreds of people, all kinds of people, all kinds of residences and situations. How does a man like you calm the anxiety of somebody who is just, they're making it hell inside their head. Like, I have to move. I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. It's freaking me out. I'm hesitant. How do you, how do you calm that person? So first thing I would recommend is that if they know that they're moving, they should start packing now. You could pack one box now of stuff that you know you you know you're not going to need, and you want to move. You you pack one box now, and already you've done something. And then maybe tomorrow you pack a second box, mm. and you label your boxes, get a, a piece of paper, and like you know inventory. So organization, like just start somewhere. Don't get, don't think about the whole thing. Mm. Just. Start packing your stuff up and start getting moving in that direction. Just start moving in that direction. And, uh, you know, eventually you're going to want to reach out and, and start doing some research on finding the right mover for you. Hmm. You know, some movers are, cost more. Some movers cost less. Some movers do certain services and some movers don't. So once you start to figure out what you need, then you'll, you'll quickly be able to find the right mover for you. And uh, yeah, so that's really what I would say is just start packing. You know, like you said, maybe start getting rid of some stuff, organizing. Something like that could go a long way in, in easing your, your stress. Yeah. Wow, that's wild. Well, Sam, how can people find you? Tell the name of your company. Uh, give your best number and i'm going to put all this stuff uh below the video so if people want to reach out to you if they have any questions if they want to book a move um 
I would love to, to just make it very easy for them and for you. So okay. go yeah, for so it. The easiest way if they want to book a move um, is to go to our website. It's www.brmoving.com. And they can fill out a form there. It's going to ask for their name and address and a brief description of what they're looking to have done. That's the, probably the easiest. Everyone is welcome to email me as well. You could always email me if you have any questions. My email is sam at brmoving.com. And I'll give out our phone number in case you want to call. It's 215-620-5796. Excellent. BRmoving.com. What does BR stand for? Well, it, it's uh, kind of a long story, but it, the short story is that uh, when, when you, people move, they're always writing BR on all their boxes, you know, master BR, master bedroom, or yeah. BR. So that's kind of, that's what it evolved to. Oh, um, wow. Okay. That's great. And, like you'll see that in a, a typical move, you'll see that written on boxes. Yeah, fantastic. So brmoving.com, and your email is sam at brmoving.com. That's it. You got it. Well, I'll tell you what, man. You answered a lot of my questions, and I know for the people that watched and will watch this in the future, I know you actually set a lot of hearts at ease because – People are at all like me. Just moving creates anxiety. You just think about, oh my gosh, I've been collecting stuff for so many years. How do I even begin? And even that little bit of advice that you gave at the very end, pack one box today. That's just, I actually just felt like, ah, uh, yeah, it was an answer. It was, you know, it calmed me just hearing that. And then you're like, and then pack another box tomorrow. You were so you were so calm about it that your calmness transferred to me. So I could see why people hire you in your company. Excellent. Thank you, George. Absolutely. Well, uh, what does the what does 2023 have in store for BR moving? Any interesting business developments or expansions or innovations? I want to, I would like to start a used box program somehow where for those people that are like budget minded, you know, because I don't like waste and, and a lot of our boxes end up in the landfill. So I would like to somehow be able to start bringing our used boxes back to our warehouse. And if people want, they could come by and take them, you know, to be used again. So I want to start like, I want to start, keep starting programs here. We now have a warehouse, so we have more room to kind of experiment and like do more fun things. So I, I want to uh, do that. You know, we're going to be moving lots of people, uh, just new relationships, uh, always open to that new moves, new problems to solve. It's, it should be a good year. You know, we're, we're looking forward to the new year. Oh, that's great. Uh, one guy just left a message. He says, wow, I am a transporter too. I just got back from a 10 day trip. I love the folks that I serve. He says, that's, that's awesome. great. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. All right. My audience, uh, brmoving.com. If you want to reach out to Sam, it's Sam at brmoving.com. Sam, thank you so much. What a tremendous show this was tonight i i can't thank you enough it was fascinating and i i really think that this is going to really like i said set a lot of people's hearts at ease i think i just think your personality too is one that's very calming in a field that could be very anxiety ridden you know move the moving industry needs a guy like you Yes. I, I couldn't imagine doing it. It just wouldn't work with me, but <laughs> you have the personality for it and you have the ability to take something large and just break it down into small manageable steps. And I, and, and that's what your industry is all about. Yeah, that's right. You, that, you put it wonderfully. 
I, I think you're right. So I appreciate that insight. You know, I hope to come back on your channel again. And uh, if any of your, you know, viewers have questions, just email me. Even if you're in a different state or a different country and you have questions about moving, I don't mind. I'll give you my advice. <laughs> and uh, I wish everyone luck in their new adventures. I think, you know, moving can be really fun too. Another thing I'll say before we go is that a lot of people are focused on their new house. You know, a new house and a new apartment, that's a new opportunity. And it's, it's out with the old and in with the new. So I think that could be a really beautiful time in someone's life, you know, to imagine your new home and imagine, imagine how you're going to set stuff up and maybe imagine a new piece of furniture you'll get or maybe imagine getting rid of your old stuff. You know, it's like a new beginning. So I think with that stressed out person maybe could stop thinking about, you know, what, you know maybe start dreaming a little bit about, about the new place. It would be good. That's magnificent, and that's brilliant. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your time. Right. And uh, definitely, when, uh, when you have something new going on, uh, any new changes, we're going to have you back on the channel because this okay. was a, one of my favorite, favorite conversations that I've had. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, George. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Okay. Yeah.